The following is a special presentation of HBO Sports. From the beginning, boxing has been a sport of power, strength, strategy, and heart. But perhaps the most effective component of all is speed. From Las Vegas, we present two of the fastest fighters in the sport today. First, Hector Camacho. Fast and flashy. Quick and dazzling. Over the last 10 years, Hector Camacho has shaded all opponents with his blazing hand speed, rapid fire combinations, and piston jab. Tonight, he puts his perfect record on the line against former lightweight champion Greg Haugen in about scheduled for 12 rounds. And then... Wait, wait, wait. Slick and accurate. Swift and tactical. Averaging 80 punches per round, Pernell Whitaker is boxing's busiest and most successful ring technician. Tonight, the undisputed lightweight champion of the world makes the first defense of his unified crown against highly ranked contender Anthony Jones. So join us for a fast and furious evening as we present four of the speediest hands in boxing today, Pernell Whitaker and Hector Camacho. Championship Boxing comes to you live from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. As HBO Sports presents a boxing doubleheader. First, a junior welterweight matchup, pitting the undefeated and ever colorful Hector Macho Camacho against the resilient and game Greg Haugen. And then in our main event, the undisputed lightweight champion of the world, Pernell Whitaker, defends his WBA, WBC, and IBF titles against Anthony Jones of Detroit. A knowledgeable crowd of boxing aficionados in the small arena in Caesars Palace, which has been the scene of some Pernell Whitaker success in the past. They get ready to watch two of the great technicians in the sport of boxing trying to move one step forward apiece in their so far illustrious and successful careers. And hello again, I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome you to a night of boxing that we're really excited about here on HBO. But because we are coming to you on the evening on which a ground war has apparently begun in the Persian Gulf, we will once again be monitoring CNN. And if something develops in the Gulf, which we think might be a compelling reason for you to switch to a news channel, we'll pass that information along. Meanwhile, we get ready first to watch the artistry of Hector Macho Camacho as he fights Greg Haugen, who lives here in Las Vegas, should have the crowd on his side, and could conceivably be a tough opponent for the Macho Man. I turn now, as always, to our HBO boxing analyst, Larry Merchant. Larry. Hector Macho Camacho, despite all the vagaries of his career, remains an undefeated fighter looking for big things down the road. What's at stake for him tonight? Well, every fight is crucial for him at this stage of his career, the short answer, precisely because going on 29 years of age, he has to be in position for the big money fights that are looming ahead of him against Chavez, against Taylor, against Whitaker. The longer answer is this appears to be yet the conclusion of another stage in his curious, even bizarre, up and down career. And it's curious and bizarre because he is, after all, undefeated in this his 12th year as a professional. And that's a very rare occurrence in boxing. When he was up, it appeared he was on the verge of greatness. When he was down, it appeared that he was sending himself into oblivion. Who knows what he's on the verge of now? What he may be on the verge of, however, because he is looking so far beyond Haugen, is a tougher fight than this should be. Indeed, uh, although a few months ago when we saw him in Lake Tahoe against Tony Baltazar, he fought the best fight he had fought in the past five years. But Hector Camacho has always been the object of some scorn and ridicule. 
And like most public figures in that position, he says he's been misunderstood. The road of fighter travels is paved with both success and hardship. Hector Camacho knows. While his career has in recent months been rejuvenated, his popularity appears to be plummeting. Hector's a mixed bag. Uh, there are times when he can be a very amusing guy, and there are times when he doesn't uh, realize he should avoid center stage, and it's not his moment. Away from boxing, a frenetic lifestyle has been Camacho's worst enemy. He's a flamboyant character who thrives on attention. It's the way he goes about getting attention that rubs people the wrong way. I'm out to have a little fun with everybody. And when people understand that one day, back home, the selfish people, the arrogant people understand that, they're going to grow to love me too. But it's difficult to take at face value someone who is constantly mired in controversy. With Camacho, controversy often grows into real trouble. There's a lot of little boy, a lot of mischievousness inside of him um, that that's uh, still there. And a part of that's real charming, but when it gets out of control, as it has on occasion, it, uh, it hurts people. That was the case December 14 at the Fighter of the Decade Awards Dinner honoring the late Mark Edis in Atlantic City. Hector wasn't to be honored, but he still took center stage. Oh, you don't give me my stage? I take it. That's how. It, that's what made me the macho man. And if they want to take that and turn it around and say, "Well, I was being disrespected to being disrespected to Mark Ellis," well, hey, that's their point of view. As far as my point of view, it's my way of saying I'm going home. You know, they always said, "Let Nixon be Nixon." You have to let Camacho be Camacho. Once considered one of the best of all fighters, this former super featherweight and lightweight champion devastated opponents with lightning hand speed and movement. But personal and professional problems reduced Camacho to a jab and grab fighter who rarely fought and lacked motivation when he did. I lost my interest in boxing. Being there when Mancini got beat, Rosario got beat by Chavez, Bramble got beat by Rosario, you know, it seemed like all the money fights went down the drain. So it was really nothing out there exciting me. Until Julio Cesar Chavez, Meldrick Taylor, and Pernell Whitaker rose to prominence. They are the three reasons for the resurgence we witnessed in Camacho's recent fights. He was burned out as a lightweight, and I think moving up uh, has been beneficial physically and mentally for Hector. I got happy people around me. I'm watching my diet better. I'm training better. No. I'm coming in my fight stronger. He can conclude this I'm able to just, you know, be more flat footed when I want to be. I'm able to. Punch off my movement. All that improves so much that it's improving my performance. As Hector's career sways from side to side, so does public opinion. With big money bouts now looming on the horizon, the rise or fall of Hector Camacho will eventually be determined by the same mercurial personality that has defined his entire career. And we bring you back live to ringside where we are just minutes away from our presentation of Hector Macho Camacho against Greg Haugen, a junior welterweight bout in Las Vegas and scheduled for 12 rounds. If you follow boxing, you may remember Greg Haugen from recent years as the two-time IBF World Lightweight Champion. Originally out of the state of Washington, later he lived in Alaska where he gained a reputation entering tough man contests in bars. And he moved to Las Vegas about seven or eight years ago, so this crowd should be on his side. That's one thing that plays in his favor, Larry. Another may be his particularly aggressive style. And his conditioning. Let's take a look at some of the best of Hogan. Here you see him as a counterpuncher. He is a rough character. 
In the old west, I think he would have been working in some silver mine or punching cattle. But he has taken to prize fighting and has had a reasonably nice career. Made some money for himself. He's going to get about $150,000 tonight. He can jab, as you'll see in a moment. And he's going to try to pressure, pressure, pressure Camacho to take advantage of what he feels is Camacho's lack of physical preparation. That video that you saw from one of his three fights against Vinny Pazienza. Pazienza was a recent Camacho victim. Greg Haugen says he had hundreds of amateur fights, dozens of fights as a tough man in the bars of Alaska, and as a professional, 31 appearances, 27 wins, two losses to Pazienza, a loss to Pernell Whitaker, and one draw. Hector Macho Camacho introduces another new outfit to the sport of boxing. As you can see, it is a send-up of an Operation Desert Storm military uniform, and this is Hector's own way, he says, of saluting the troops in the Middle East. And like Hector himself, is filled with paradox. If anybody is a guy who doesn't particularly like a ground war, it is Hector Camacho. He's, he's more of an air war guy or perhaps even amphibious. But this new outfit will be a one-time only if it is in keeping with the Camacho tradition. And we take a look back at some of the fashion highlights of his career. Of yeah, course, I thought if there was ever a Boxing Hall of Fame that there ought to be a wardrobe wing for Camacho's costumes, some of which are pretty inventive and crazy. Just as there are wardrobe wings in some great museums I've been into, in Europe, the Prince Albert in London, uh, the Pompidou in Paris. Just look at them. Irrepressible. And no doubt some of the booing that comes from the crowd is from the hearts and minds of those who believe that Hector has in fact insulted our troops who are fighting a ground war in the Middle East tonight rather than saluted them. But he has always been different. And as he says, this is just my way. There has always been a love-hate relationship with Camacho because of these kinds of antics, but there it is. The record speaks for itself, undefeated in nearly 12 years as a professional. Only 16 knockouts, though, and none of them of recent vintage. In his last nine fights in the last five years, he has had one stoppage. So Hector does not bring the kind of punching power into the ring that causes you to look for an explosive ending. Tail of the tape between Camacho and Haugen, not much difference between the two. Although Hector struggled a bit to make weight for this fight. And Larry, take us back to the weigh-in yesterday afternoon. All right, he had to take off three or four pounds yesterday. He was fortunate that the weigh-in was yesterday instead of this morning. Had a strip down to nothing. Weighed 140, and you can see him looking at the scale as though he's looking at Chavez. He thinks this has been his main fight for this fight, and sometimes that means you're overlooking the real fight, the opponent. And here are your punch stats. Haugen surprisingly throws more punches, but Camacho is much more quick-handed. And here you see the jabs. They throw roughly the same amount of jabs. And the rules for the fight are those of an organization called the World Boxing Organization, for which Camacho is the titleist. That's why this fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. We at HBO don't recognize the WBO as a legitimate world sanctioning body, so we don't call him a world titleist. Three judges will score the fight on a 10-point must, no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. You can be saved by the bell in the last round only. And we go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Caesars Palace here in Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight, main events and the undisputed, undefeated king of beer, Budweiser presents a double dose of world championship boxing. This first bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization, President Dr. Ramon Acevedo, Supervisor Alberto Aleman, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. James Nave, Commissioners Luther Mack, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Bruce Lane and Nat Karasali. The executive director is Chuck Minker. The scoring will be done by three judges at ringside on a 10-point must system, and they are William McConkie, Dalby Shirley, and Art Laurie. 
Physicians at ringside, Dr. Flip Omansky, Dr. James Wishgame, and Dr. Al Capana, the timekeepers, Al Bicek and Jane Broadfoot. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, the moment you've all been waiting for, so let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds for the WBO Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. The referee for this first title bout is Carlos Padilla. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the USA colors of red, white, and blue. He weighed in at 139 pounds. His professional record, 27, 3, and 1, 13 KOs. He's fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, a two-time world champion. Tonight, the challenger, ladies and gentlemen, Ray. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the combat camouflage trunks and weighing an even 140 pounds, originally from Spanish Harlem, now living and fighting on the Osage Indian Reservation in Florida. He's a three-time world champion, undefeated with a record of 38 and 0, 16 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, it's macho time. He's the WBO junior welterweight champion of the world, Hector. Macho! The Macho! A considerably more subdued Hector Camacho in pre-fight ceremonies than was the case in Lake Tahoe last August when he got ready to beat Tony Balthazar. Well, he's been subdued for days, which is unlike him, and again signals uh, the fact that he's really looking beyond this fight. What Haugen is looking for, Jim, is a long, grueling fight, hoping to take Camacho into deep water with his conditioning at the end of a 12 round fight. Haugen says that he's more motivated for this fight than he has been for any in three years since the second pass he ends about back in February of 1988. He believes that Camacho's difficulties in making weight create a tremendous opportunity for him to out fight Camacho based on stamina and conditioning. As you said, Larry. Oh, 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 oh. The problem with that theory, Jim, is that one uh, Camacho is a type of boxer who will fight a minute and a half of a round if he has to by clutching and moving about. And also, at least in the past, he's had this amazing reservoir of energy. Now you saw Greg Haugen bring his right elbow around very close to Camacho's chin. He has a history of cracking opponents with the elbow. Surprising in his first minute that Haugen has actually beaten Camacho to the punch with his jab. Absolutely. It is Haugen who's getting off first in these exchanges so far. short almost all the time with the jab. Only twice as he stepped in close enough to exchange. It's probably going to be up to Haugen to crowd Camacho if he wants to step up the tempo of the fight. Once again, Haugen beats Camacho to the punch. Left to the body by Haugen giving two punches and stepping away from the one in return by Camacho. 
another two-punch combination from Haugen. The first one landed to the body, and now he digs Camacho to the ropes. And if Haugen can keep this up, he'll get the crowd into the bout, and they will help to buoy his spirits as he goes along. A very good round for Haugen, and surprising this early in the fight, that he can do what he just did. Yeah, put some water on this. Come on, yeah, come back to that hook after that right hand. Now you're doing beautiful. You're watching it. Stay nice. Crouch a little more. Move the head from side to side, okay? And do not, don't back out with the chin up. Make sure you go back coming up, you know? Yeah, you got him inside there. Let him either break you up, you know? That's the way to go, man. You're doing fine. Looking good. And then when you're up there, Super. like you did over that bulldog in the knee, you can't do nothing. It's just good. You're doing fine. Do the same thing. You're right. He's your knife. It's your knife. It's your knife. Every time he jabbed over hand, bro. Every time he jabbed over hand, bro. Come me. Thank you, bro. Go ahead and get him, bro. The man who did most of the talking in Haugen's corner is his former amateur coach, Jim Montgomery. Trainer George Chimeras stood to the side and didn't have much to say. Good left to the body by Haugen. We're told that Camacho's corner asked their fighter to be economical, throw a lot of feints to conserve energy, don't waste punches. And now Camacho lands twice with the left and backs Haugen up. Good left hand by Camacho. Catching Haugen on the way in. Haugen has a history of being an open target. Camacho believes he might be able to cut him. Haugen has some history of being cut, but he claimed his skin is tough enough to take anything Camacho throws. Camacho is trying to make Haugen leave. Good right hand inside by Camacho. Caught Haugen on the button of the chin. Very good exchange for Camacho. His punch is much more accurate in this round. This fight, Jim, inevitably is going to be compared to the Whitaker Haugen fight of two years ago. Good, good counter by Camacho there when Whitaker completely dominated Haugen. A near shutout. Whitaker won 11 rounds of the 12 on one scorecard. Now he's getting the range. A very nice counter by Camacho there. This has been an excellent round for Hector after an indifferent round one. More aggressive Camacho in this round than was the case in the first stanza. And that was Camacho's round. As we listen to Hector Camacho's corner, translation from former two-time world champion Ruben Castillo. Throw your left hand straight, just like you're doing it. Don't, don't hurry yourself. Control yourself, you're doing fine. You have the range now. The range is beautiful. Move him a lot. No moviéndolo es todo. Esto no lo tomes ahora. Tíralo. Right, right. 
Así como lo estás canteando, como lo estás canteando es perfecto con la izquierda y luego... Let's take a look, Camacho. There you see that quick handedness. But he doesn't put his whole body into the punch. He doesn't commit himself fully, which is why he is the type of fighter he is. Which has certainly been good enough. Camacho did more talking this week about a hoped for fight with Chavez than he did about Haugen. And he thinks that Haugen is, is a good primer for Chavez because of his style. And there is some similarity. Though certainly Haugen has never displayed the precision punching accuracy or the power inside at this weight that Chavez has. And Chavez is deceptively quick also in the way he pursues a boxer. beginning to take complete command of these exchanges near the center of the ring. It's fashionable in the sport to say that Meldrick Taylor has the fastest hands of all the fighters in these middle range weight classes. But when you look at Camacho at his best, you begin to question that a little. Except that Camacho rarely throws more than a two punch combination. And of course, Taylor is constantly moving forward and really moving back with the weight. Taylor, I should say. You did, and it's a good point. Camacho moves backward a great deal more often than does Melchior Taylor. Combination to the body by Camacho, I thought. Camacho is trading three and four punches while taking one or two from Haugen in all of these third round exchanges. It's been another good round for the Macho Man. Just as I was saying, he doesn't get his body into his punches. Hagen walked into a good, stiff, sort of right hook from Camacho. Only the second time in Greg Hagen's professional career that he's been down, Pernell Whitaker was the other man to knock him down to the canvas. We'll take another look at Hector Camacho putting Greg Hagen on his back for only the second time in his career. We haven't seen much of Camacho's a power, he's not a power puncher, but here you'll see him come up with a right, right there. And a good right cross. Very good stuff from Camacho. We've talked recently about how Camacho is coming back to his former self as a fighter with the Pazienza fight, starting with the Pazienza fight. And that flurry there is about as good as we've seen him in the last year. Haugen so intent on trying to stay busy inside and test Camacho that his hands were to his side and he was wide open to take that punch. So now Hector Camacho goes forward with the confidence of having put two terrific rounds behind him having asserted, so far, control of the fight. Between rounds, Camacho
Muto was told by trainer Rudy Dada in his quarter to keep picking his spots, be economical, not try for the knockout, and conserve his energy. Which indicates that they're a little bit concerned over the fact that he had to take off three or four pounds yesterday. The master plan for Hector Camacho envisions a fight against Julio Cesar Chavez in late May or early June. And no such final arrangements have been made yet. But Camacho says he's ready for that. I heard today, Jim, that it might not happen until the fall because of problems with promoters. But right now, Camacho still has work to do against Haugen. And still must prove, if this fight goes eight, nine rounds, that he still has that amazing reservoir of energy. So far, the Haugen strategy is not panning out. It had been his intention to throw upwards of 70 or 80 punches around to try to test Camacho. Instead, it is Camacho who threw 82 punches in round three, while Haugen threw only 45. Haugen trying to dig to the body. And he gives Camacho another chance to nail him with a right and a left. And Camacho cleverly set that trap, Jim. He was absolutely setting a trap, and he sprung it. A good left hand. Haugen holding and hitting and getting away with it for a second. As referee Carlos Padilla seemed momentarily overwhelmed by the action. For all his ego outside of the ring, Camacho sells very little ego in the ring. He's very calculating. You would have thought, after the way he ended the previous round, that he might have come out to really test Haugen, intimidate him, but no, he just went back to the calculated game plan. One at a time, one at a time. Talk one at a time. Yeah. Okay. Like you, like you were Talk doing. Stay inside like that when you got him in against the rope. Make him tie you up. You know, you're scoring big in there. When you pull out, that's when you're going to get hit. And he's looking for you to pull out. Okay, okay Harold Letterman, finish. our unofficial okay. official, how have you scored this fight? Larry, three rounds to one, 39 to 36, favor Hector Camacho. Remember the four points in which we score. Clean punching, it's Camacho. Effective aggressiveness, it's Haugen, but not he's not doing nothing. Ring generalship, it's all Camacho in defense. It's got to be Camacho because Haugen's not scoring. Punch stat numbers were relatively even in round four, but still it was Camacho landing far the more effective blows. Let's keep in mind, this is Haugen's hometown. Camacho doesn't want to get into a close, tough fight. Keep in mind also that it's a 12-round fight, and that if there is a conditioning problem for Camacho, it's likely to show up in rounds eight through 12. Haugen brings the crowd alive a little bit with a couple of body blows. looks over as a, at us as if to say, I took it well. Very rarely have I seen Camacho tag with a good straight right hand like that right on the chin. Haugen now beginning to lead with the right more often. Trying to come over the top. Gets it in one more time. Right 
to the body. Hector Camacho appearing to slow down just a little bit here in round five. Now he steps forward and threatens Haugen with the left. Persistence, persistence, persistence. And Camacho looks a little tired. He may very well be. He still isn't anxious to trade. He only punches when Haugen isn't punching. And Haugen is trying to use that to his advantage. Hector Camacho ends round five. His balance a little creaky and sucking win. After Greg Haugen stages a mini comeback. You gotta keep, you gotta start throwing more than one. He wants you to faint, faint, throw one, two. That's all you gotta do. Put it on his neck. Yeah. You're the fucking yeah, boss. You're the bull. There's only one bull. The thing that you're making a mistake is pulling back. Rubbing his legs. He's, oh. he's rubbing everything, baby. He's rubbing everything. Okay? All right. Where's the mouth? Be smart now. Be smart now. Don't pull back. You just throw it. Don't pull back. You just throw it. You heard Haugen talking about Camacho rubbing his legs. Haugen is a physical fitness aficionado, and he's trying to calibrate just what Camacho's fitness is by watching his behavior, how he's breathing, how he behaves in the corner. Haugen smiling as he begins round six. He described aerobic workouts and cardiovascular conditioning to us yesterday, which sounded positively torturous, keeping his heart rate at 160 beats per minute for as long as an hour at a time. I've, I've never heard a fighter talking about stealing another fighter's heart and meaning it cardiovascularly. <laughs> Usually it means having to, to dampen the other fighter's will to fight. But he just feels that if he could just stay active and keep Camacho moving, that Camacho will run out of steam. And there is increasing evidence that he may have found something. As Haugen begins round six, much the way he ended round five. Again, the right hand creeps through the Camacho defense. Good left by Camacho. Stop Haugen in his tracks for a second. You know, I think we presented the image of Haugen a bit, Jim, as a sort of a brawler that comes straight at. But he is clever. He knows about boxing. He's not leading with his chin. He's not trying to land one punch to, to the other guy's two. You go back five years, and when Hector Camacho got pinned against the ropes by Edwin Rosario several times in their bout at Madison Square Garden, he got in trouble. Haugen referred to that yesterday. He'd like to make it happen again. A lot of people think that that fight was the turning point in Camacho's career, that he started to go downhill after that. And this represents his uphill climb right here. He won a decision over Rosario, but took some heavy punishment en route to it. Two fighters locking heads in the middle of the ring. Camacho with a little bit the better of the exchange. Come 
Camacho is about a seven or eight to one favorite. I wouldn't want to have laid the odds on this fight. And Haugen chases Camacho halfway across the ring and barks at him to end round six. Okay. You're doing fine. You're scoring well. We are. You know, still the same little mistake. Make sure you keep this left jab up. Don't get it down off here. No, no, no. Because then you're protecting yourself from that hook. See, so make sure you're shooting. You're shooting that. <laughs> right, baby. They're, they're all behind you. They're all behind you. Man, I'd like to see a few more. You're going to knock him down. Good man. Very well. You throw your uppercut. Try, if you throw it, if you throw that uppercut again, you will turn, you will knock him down again. Between rounds, the crowd was chanting Haugen, Haugen. Keep in mind that he lives here in Las Vegas. If, if Camacho goes on to win this fight, it will be seen as just another fight, another number on his record, uh, presumably a fairly easy fight. But when you hear, look at it, this, even when you, even when you win, even when a great fighter wins, he's got to work at it and suffer for it. It well, he's ain't been that easy. Him. Yeah, he's in it against an intelligent, tough guy who has a specific plan for this fight that he's determined to make work. With the crowd on his side, this is no easy assignment. Good left hand by Camacho, a left and a right, and he begins to show some of the energy that he demonstrated in rounds two through four. Camacho holding Haugen behind the head. Camacho trying to bait Haugen into leading so that he can counter. And Haugen is being very careful about leading for that reason. career when Hector Camacho would never have stood in the center of the ring and exchanged with an opponent the way he has several times tonight with Greg Haugen. He's doing it willingly and getting the better of many of the exchanges as he did several times in that round. It was beautiful. You got it perfect. That was a good round for Camacho. Don't let him travel too much to the front. Don't let him look good. Don't give him a chance. Let, let's attack him a little bit. All right, Harold, how do you see the fight through seven rounds? Larry, I've got it a surprisingly close four rounds to three, 67 to 65, favor Hector Camacho. I think that Hector let Greg Haugen get inside in rounds five and six and turn it into a brawl, and I thought Haugen won rounds five and six to make it a close fight. Uh, if Haugen gets inside and Camacho don't punch, Haugen wins those rounds. 
I have Camacho ahead by one point. Round seven, the best round for Camacho since round four. Haugen had dominated five and six, but still it was Haugen who was the more accurate puncher in round seven. Camacho nearly doubled him in business, though. 85 punches to only 48 for Haugen in that round. You heard Camacho between rounds turning to our camera and saying, happy birthday, Keisha. That is to a lady friend, Keisha, who he says has been a lady friend for the past several months. And he's hoping that by wishing her happy birthday, he can smooth out relations between them. He says they had a small falling out recently. Keith, Keisha, if you're watching, we wish you a happy birthday, too. Left hand, uppercut, solid. Corner asking Camacho to throw more uppercuts. One of the puzzlements of Hector Camacho. He's so fast handed. He's probably stronger than Haugen. Why isn't he more anxious to step in and go with him from time to time? Not leave with his head, but just go with him. Because of his preference for tactical fighting, that some regard the nickname Macho to be one of the most <laughs> ironic labels in this or any other sport. There are many, many paradoxes. That and the wardrobe, of course. <laughs> in Hector Camacho. He was the first fighter ever to wear a skirt into the ring. Camacho may have joked at Haugen with a short punch in close with Haugen's back to us, we couldn't see it. Conditioned Hector Camacho, who struggled to make it down to 140 pounds for this fight, is about to complete the eighth round in pretty good shape against an opponent who believes that the late rounds should favor him. This is the first of our HBO World Championship boxing doubleheader tonight. Coming up following this bout, You'll see undisputed lightweight champion Pernell Whitaker of Norfolk, Virginia against challenger Anthony Jones of Detroit in another bout scheduled for 12 rounds. And we take a quick visit now to the Whitaker locker room where you see Pernell with the Walkman headset on. <laughs> Hello, Pernell. How you doing? How you doing, guys? <laughs> well, we're doing okay. How do you think Camacho's doing? Well, right now, Larry, I think it's a great fight, good fight right now. And, you know, it's, it's closer than what the, what, what the judges have it. Uh, I think Haugen's putting on a, a good show. But, uh, you know, like I know, you know, I'm just concentrating right now on what I have to do when I go out there to close this show out. Did you sense in rounds uh, five and six that Camacho might be tiring a little bit, Purnell? I think the body shots, uh, if Greg Haugen was to use more body shots, it'll, it'll be more effective for him. All right, we'll see you later on. Get ready for your assignment tonight when we go back for round nine. Through the first eight rounds, Hector Camacho, by punch count statistics, threw 180 more punches than Greg Haugen. Landed 29 more. Haugen's been slightly more accurate, but it is Camacho's superior activity which appears to have given him an edge in the fight. And he scored the knockdown at the end of round three when he put Haugen on his back with a short right hand. And that might be the difference in this fight before it's all over. Go 
Good straight left by Camacho. There are a lot of ugly red welts on Haugen's face and around his shoulder areas, but no blood. He has not been cut. He suggested to us that he could take a lot of punches from Camacho and that his skin wouldn't break. A very committed Greg Haugen told us this was such a great opportunity for him that they'd have to carry him from the ring for him to lose the bout. But he, like so many others, may have underestimated the artistry and the superior tactical technicianship of Hector Camacho. This is a completely negative round by Camacho so far. He isn't doing anything to win the round. Allowing Haugen to dictate to him. This is a very difficult fight to score, and this is Haugen's hometown. He's dead, ha uh, Hector. Round coming up, Hector. Tenth round coming up. Keep doing what you are doing. Don't look to knock them out. We need 12 solid rounds. We're going to throw more uppercuts, okay? We got to We got to be calm. But there's only six minutes left to demonstrate the okay. world champ. Nine more minutes in the fight. That's it. Here's Camacho when he did put something together at the end of that round. Fake right, right jab followed by a straight left. Not a lot of power behind it, but a scoring blow. Round 10 begins. Conventional wisdom is that by now, Camacho would be so far ahead that Haugen wouldn't have a chance. That is not the case, apparently. In fact, you might say Haugen has him just where he wanted him, going into the last three rounds with a chance, with a chance. to make his professed strategy pay off, Haugen is going to have to step up the activity level. He's just not pressuring Camacho enough, I don't think, Larry, to win the fight on the judges' scorecard. Well, he may be counting on the fact that as a Las Vegas fighter, that he might get the benefit of the doubt in some of these close rounds. And that if he can make each round close, he's going to win more of the close ones than Camacho. Certainly, if the judges are looking for effective aggression, which is one of the criteria Harold Letterman always cites, it is Haugen who is chasing Camacho from corner to corner and around and around the ring. The difference in hand speed, again, readily apparent there. Trying 
nightly, Jim. This is becoming a little ugly. There's nothing real artful here. Nobody is really seizing command. Sort of like a football game with a lot of three-yard runs. Nobody taking any real chances. Kind of game that's normally won by a late field goal. <laughs> with his left hand below his waist. Keeping the left hand below his waist. So confident that he's the aggressor and that Camacho is interested only in counterpunching, but he believes he can stand in front of him with no protection. And in this round, he's right. Two more rounds to go. How do you see the fight? Larry, seven rounds to three. 97-92, Hector Camacho. Greg Howden just isn't landing enough punches. He gets inside, he chases him, he doesn't score. He's got to land punches to win the round. I have it scored much closer than you do. I think Howden can steal this fight if he wins the last two rounds. tell you, Harold, I'm surprised you gave round 10 to Camacho. That looked like a Haugen round to me. Apparently, the people in Hector Camacho's corner told him that round 12 was coming up. This is round 11, not round 12. Maybe Hector is more aware of the circumstances than you are his trainer Rudy Mata and the others around him there. Well, maybe they're trying to get a, a good, two good 12th rounds out of Camacho. <laughs> Apparently his corner isn't worried about a hometown decision. Um, maybe they're right, maybe they're not. But I don't know why you would want to take a chance with so much at stake for Camacho to let a fight be this as close as this one might be. Stranger things have happened in Las Vegas than a Greg Haugen decision here. Greg Haugen, with his conditioning, with his effort, has given himself the best chance to win. Camacho, by having weight problems, didn't give himself his best chance to win, and consequently, this is more of a fight than it figured to be.
Falcon continues now relentlessly to stalk the Macho Man. Greg Hogan is sniffing a monumental upset for himself here. The crowd is a little bit slow. Yeah, no. Throw it. Do it with. Do it with all you got, baby. Stay right in his face. Camacho to win this round if he wants to win this fight. Harold Letterman and I Referee disagree Carlos on that. Padilla is wasting a lot of seconds here, and now Camacho decides to begin the aggression. Padilla takes a point away from Camacho in what could be a monumental turn of events. If this fight is close, that's a big moment. Jim, I missed it. What happened? Why did he do that? I don't know why Padilla was holding the two fighters apart, but he wasn't allowing them to start, and Camacho got impatient and went ahead and hit Haugen three or four times. And Carlos Padilla just took a point away from Hector Camacho. Uh, Harold Letterman, what, what is your view? What happened there? Jim, Carlos Padilla wanted him to touch gloves at the start of the round. It's traditional in boxing. Hector Camacho walked in and whacked Greg Haugen, and Padilla thought it was a, a dirty tackle. On Camacho's part, it took a point away for illegal tactics. I've never seen that, but what it effectively does is neutralize the knockdown advantage that Camacho had earlier in the fight. Listen to the crowd. This is Greg Haugen's wildest dream. This is what he hoped for. What can he do in the next minute and a half to make it pay off? Jimmy Paul in this particular arena to win the world championship for the first time. He talked about that yesterday. He said he wasn't scared of being a 7-1 to underdog against Hector Camacho because he's tasted success under these circumstances on this very ring before. Both fighters are tired. But it is Camacho who is staying away and Haugen who's pressing the action. It's interesting that in a fight in which Camacho did very little leading, and showed in many rounds not an eagerness to really punch, that coming out for the 12th round and throwing a punch could cost him the fight. As we come down to the end, remember the three things that could make a difference in a close fight. The knockdown in round three when Camacho put Haugen on his back for only the second time in his career. The point taken away from Camacho at the beginning of round 12 for punching before touching gloves. And the fact that this is Greg Haugen's hometown with a wildly enthusiastic crowd behind him. in one more blow to the chest after the bell. This is a big night for Greg Haugen. Well, it gives him a reason to go on. It gives him hope that he'll be able to make more money at, at this game. He doesn't have too many more big fights left. 
But you wonder what this means for Camacho, whether this could ruin his sought for big, big money fight with Chavez. And, and this was a rehearsal for the Chavez fight. Right. I mean, who could have imagined Chavez in there tonight? But of course, uh, Camacho tried to calibrate his training for the caliber of opponent, but he may have misjudged it, and that's the danger in doing that. Let's take a look back now at what happened at the beginning of the 12th round. And you see the inordinately long delay while Padilla waited for the two fighters to touch gloves, and there went Camacho. The irony of that is, Jim, I don't think Camacho landed a punch. How can you take a point away when it looked like Camacho didn't even land anything there? Harold, how do you have it? Well, Larry, very, very close. I got it 114, 112 Hector Camacho, basically because I didn't think Greg Haugen did enough to run 7, 8, 9, and 10. But let me tell you, I wouldn't argue either way. It's a darn close fight. I very, have it, very close fight. Jim, I have it scored a draw. 5-5-2. Five, five, and two. And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer to see what the three judges thought. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Here's the official scoring. Dolby Shirley scores the bout. 114 to 112 for Camacho. Bill McConkey scores the bout. 114 to 112. He has it for Haugen. Art Laurie scores the bout. 114 to 113 for the winner by split decision here at Caesars Palace. And new champion. close and hard-fought battle. Hector Camacho told us yesterday that his greatest desire was to end his career unbeaten. That goes by the boards. It's early in 1991, but in the first two months of this year, this is the upset of the year in the sport of boxing. Maybe more to come. Final punch stat statistics, Camacho threw more punches by 170. Haugen was the slightly more accurate puncher. All in all, a pretty close bout, and you heard how the judges found it. Is Larry ready with the winner? I think we're just about ready if Larry can get himself. All right, let's go up there now. Larry Merchant with Greg Haugen. All right, Greg, your battle plan seemed to work. You tell us about it. Why did you win this fight? Well, I knew he took me lightly. He wasn't in condition. Uh, macho time's over. You know, I knew if I trained hard and I could fight my fight. Uh, I think I've only lost one fight, really, and that's to Whitaker, the undisputed lightweight champion, uh, and he's a great fighter. You know, I knew if I trained hard and he took me light, I was going to win the fight. What specifically did you do, do you feel, that turned this fight around? I was just focused. I wanted this belt. I wanted to beat Camacho in the first one. It was my wife. Uh, I just worked hard. I worked so hard for this fight, harder than I've ever worked. He knocked you down in the third round, took everybody by surprise, probably you as well. What well, were your thoughts then? I was kind of going back. I was pulling back, and it was a clean shot, but it wasn't. It didn't hurt me. It was off balance. You know, I, uh, I didn't feel that I was hurt. I got right up and I came right back on him and showed him that I wasn't hurt and put the pressure back on him. 
When did you sense that he was running out of gas, if you did? About the fourth round, I thought he was getting tired. I seen him getting tired, uh, breathing hard, and I just wanted to keep the pressure on him. I knew Be I was in great condition. Between rounds, you were watching him in the corner. What what signs did you see that told you that? that? Well, they were rubbing his legs, trying to get some life in him. Uh, he just wasn't moving well. You know, he wanted to stop and he didn't want to fight. He wanted to grab and wanted to move. Uh, you know, I seen him rubbing his legs. He was four pounds overweight yesterday. He sucked fluid after weighing and that was dehydration. Greg, Greg, you probably won this fight because the referee took a point away from him in the last round when he threw some punches at you at the time when you were touching gloves. I don't care how I won it, I won it. Did he hit you? Because from, from sure what I saw, me. it looked like it, it, the punches were either great. He was missing a lot of punches. He was frustrated. He didn't want to come in because I was hitting him with some good shots to the body, good shots to the head. And he, he was kind of just flicking his jab and he was afraid to make any initiative to come in and, and take any chances. So, you know, I just had to keep the pressure on him and I knew I could beat him. Thank you very much, Greg, for thank a good you, fight. I'd like to give a, thank Dan Duva and Main Events and Bob Arum for giving me the chance to fight, uh, for taking me as opponent. And uh, I'm back, boys. Okay. All right, Jim. Back to you. All right, thanks, Larry. And there goes one of the toughest and gamest lightweights, junior welterweights you're ever going to see in the sport of boxing. But throughout his past 11 years, the Puerto Rican Hector Camacho, because of his flamboyant style in and out of the ring, has gotten as much attention as any other contemporary fighter, with perhaps the exceptions of Sugar Ray Leonard and Mike Tyson. And because of that, he was the man who had a chance for a possible five or six million dollar payday, it's estimated, in a fight against Julio Cesar Chavez to come up a little bit later this year. Now that goes out the window. There are other prospective opponents for Chavez, but because Camacho was unbeaten, because he was an overwhelming favorite to beat Haugen, and because of the prospect of Camacho Chavez and perhaps Camacho Pernell Whitaker or Camacho Meldrick Taylor, what you just saw was a monumental event in the sport. Now joining me once again is Larry Merchant, and Larry, you made the accurate point, although he didn't seem to want to acknowledge it. He won the fight because referee Carlos Badilla took a point away from Camacho at the beginning of the 12th round for throwing punches without touching gloves, punches which, as the replay showed, did not hit Haugen. What do you think of that? <laughs> Boy, we've seen some odd things in the <laughs> rings in Las Vegas. A fight, a fight stopped with two seconds left, a point taken away because a guy throws a punch when they're supposed to just touch gloves. But be that as it may, I think the big news here tonight is Hector Camacho didn't have it. And maybe he doesn't have it anymore, and maybe those victories that we saw him put together since the Pazienza fight were something of an illusion. He's fought only 10 times now in five years. He's carefully selected his opponents. He hasn't had his full heart in it since that Rosario fight. And tonight, we saw that he had kidded himself about it, to not get in shape for a big fight in the best shape he could be. And as we said early on, before the fight, we said this could be a tougher fight for him than it should be. And two, Greg Haugen gave himself his best chance by getting in top shape, and the other guy didn't. And so, in a way, justice prevailed. You having fun? <laughs> We're only halfway finished. How about that? You have seen the appetizer, and what an appetizer it was. Now let's get ready for the main event and a look at the undisputed lightweight champion of the world.